Sea Kayaking, Isle of Skies West Coast, April 2022, Part 2. Six o'clock and all is well. Bob with breakfast. Too early to be up. Well, what have we got here? Wheel vertebrae and rib. Sandy launch. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sandy launch would have been better, wouldn't it? After an early start, Bob and I left the relative safety of Logel Bay to paddle south and meet up with Wolf Tapsfield around lunchtime at Harlosh within Brackadale Bay. This section of coastline was for me the highlight of the trip so far, with a multitude of sea caves, arches and waterfalls all along the route down to McLeod's Maidens. Nice cave behind it as well, but you'd get wet. Early morning wasn't the best for filming this section of coastline, as it meant shooting straight into the sun. However, it did produce the odd nice flare effect. Oh, Bob, another arch. Beauty. Almost like that last one. I was getting quite excited as it was a real treat discovering the many sea caves and arches. The Hebrides were clearly visible with the glassy conditions and good visibility. Oh right! McLeod's maidens came into view in the far distance. Oh that was quick! I think there's caves marked on the map just up here. Lovely sandy bottom. Yeah. You want to go in, Bob? You want to go in? It's pretty damn good. Really impressive. Wow.
That's a proper troglodyte cave, that Bob. The tranquility and rock formations of this place conjured up all manner of images to the imagination. Got to be the highlight of the trip, this Bob. Pretty damn decent. It was amazing as the waterfall came into view, perfectly surrounded by the arch. Yeah, you can get round. Our seaborne friends kept an eye on us from time to time as we paddled along. They're difficult to capture, Bob, because when the pinnacles go into the headland, you just lose it. You'll have paddled through, so you're starting to lose the gap now of the, the foot of McLeod. This outside one's looking a bit thin with cracks up it, isn't it? There wasn't much imagination required to work out who was who at McLeod's Maidens. However, McLeod's silhouette distinctly reminded me of Batman the Dark Knight. Even in this remote area, we weren't alone pursuing our sports, with climbers scaling the cloud and various rocks around the headland. There's lots of good caves even on this section, Bob. The icing on the cake. It's a deep one. But she don't get puked on. Rounding the point from McLeod's Maidens, we entered Loch Brackadale, encompassing Harlosh, Harlosh Island, and other scenic islands of Tarner Island and Waiye. No, just a bit low, I think.
No. A doubler. Crossing Loch Brackadale, we hoped that Will would be waiting to join us at Harlosh, but due to traffic delays he would be another half hour or so before we could begin the tedious four hour shuttle of vehicles from Dunvegan to Elgol and back to Harlosh. Come on Will, you need to turn that light now as we're driving in. Yep. Get your video. While the boys were away doing the long vehicle shuttle, I flew the drone to capture a few views over Loch Brackadale and still had time for a wee snooze on the concrete slipway next to the boats before their return. With Bob and Will finally back, we hastily made a late afternoon start on our trip south to Taluska Bay on the exposed west coast. Yeah, you can see the arch off the end of that Tanner Island. The caves on that one. I'd cancelled the trip only a week earlier as the swell forecast for Taluska Bay was giving around 10 foot swell and not the place to be landing fully laden sea kayaks. Thankfully our forecast now was around a foot That was McLeod's Maidens, we're above the top. You have a look to your far right. Rounding the prominent cliffs on the west side of Waye, we crossed the southeastern end of the lock to the headland beyond to make our way down to Taliska Bay. Mm. That's really funny. Yellow, green, red. Once unpacked and the tents up, we were able to settle down to some well earned grub before the fading light. That's rum, isn't it, Jeff? No, it's a Hebrides. Yeah, that's lovely, that now. On the availability of a supply of driftwood, every kayak camp deserves a decent fire with the obligatory whiskey or run to ponder the day's events. A run round the campsite. I'm eating my porridge. Robert cooking breakfast or Leave me alone. Or trying to. Leave me in peace. <laughs> and what's Will up to? Good morning Will, how are you? Fine. What a stunning morning, eh? Fabulous. A Absolutely spot. fabulous. Absolutely. What are we cooking? We're what just we? creating our lunch here. Oh, so well. oat cakes, cheese and oat cakes for lunch. Well. We've had our breakfast and we're finishing well. our coffee off. So all all good. Excellent. And, uh, slept well. Good. Good so, good. Warm enough? Uh, yeah, yeah, warm enough. Great. Chilly night though, wasn't it? I don't know, to be honest, I was flat out. Oh, well, I was, uh, yeah. Could have something to do with the whiskey in the room. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and the campfire, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Fantastic, and what a fire last night. It was good, yeah. Hang on, where are you going? 
that a sphinx or a dog? So day four, we set off and paddled south to Soy Island, stopping off on the way at the promontory of Aruba Nandunum, a unique area with its ancient Iron Age fort and evidence of the old Viking canal, docks, boat quay and repair yard. The change in sea conditions today allowed us a little play close into the rocks, keeping an ever watchful eye for the odd rock or wave that may catch us out. That's impressive. Friendly seal there on your right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Will was in his element. As ever, he loves to get close into the rocks. From Dunningale, we were climbing on Dunningale. It's awesome climb. In a tush. Oh, bugger. Well, and presumably that's the fort on the top. You see that patch of rocks there? But that must be where the canal is, through there. Kayakers here. Three kayakers here. A maroon.
The rocks and cliffs of Suri Island seem to be of a completely different maple, a lot more broken up and a lot softer in structure. Kayak into the fish and chip shop. That's the way. You know what they call a veteran? Over 40. I love it. Fun, Good fun. With food consumed, it was off on a quest to visit the Roman shark station of the famous Gavin Maxwell, situated on the edge of the sheltered lock deep within the centre of Soy Island. The now ruined station comprises a few old buildings and some gruesome machinery which was presumably used to render down the flesh of basking sharks for their lucrative oil. It's pretty gruesome if you were mincing stuff up, isn't it? Some big tanks in there, I bet that's where... Walking around old buildings again. Here we go again. Yep. Trains yeah, all it's, all, it's all bunded, isn't it? I think it is, I think it's lobster. This might this might be later. Right, we have a doctor with us. That's all right. That's a tick. Burn the tick <laughs> off. <laughs> burn you. Burn you. Burn the. Have you had a fun two days, Will? Has it been alright? It's been a great. Uh, well, yeah, two days. Yeah. Oh.